the big calls, on all the big races. Welcome back to another edition of What a Shout, the Racing Post flagship feature weekend show. Myself, Dave Alton, thrilled to be back in the seat with you on a Thursday morning. Yes, we'll be previewing all the big races coming up for you, a Friday treat as well. Alongside our sponsors, Bet365, all the prices ready for you. Got a great guest interview for you as well. Three weeks in a row, we've had Paul Keeley as well, man. Loving these, aren't we? Oh, yeah, good fun. Good fun, absolutely. How's the radar still? Um, missed a few last week, to be honest. Yeah, not. I got some great prices, and they all ran dreadfully. One of the. It's I had a gumball went off hundred and thirty. I got fourteen to one. That was a right but, old know, gamble. But yeah, it's just not. It's yeah. just not happening. No, fair enough. All right, let's go to Stoke then from our sponsors, Bet Three Six Five. Pat Cooney comes back on as ever. Yes, and uh, what a wonderful weekend we got in store, haven't we? And the Breeders' Cup to cap it all with the mighty flight line. So really looking forward to it. Ah, nod, of course, to Keeneland. Yes, we'll be doing a little section on that for you. Just a little word on last weekend then, Pat. You must have been thrilled with Brave Man's game coming up as he did. Yeah, absolutely. It was a terrific uh, couple of days and uh, we wanted the headliners to turn up and win. And uh, that's what we got with Brave Man's game. He jumped, he travelled, he, he did absolutely everything. And um, he's currently joint favourite with Alaho for the King George. You'd have to say Alaho's form reads better than Brave Man's game, but uh, we went to wait and see if uh, Willie Mullins is going to confirm Alaho yet, but that'll be some clash on Boxing Day if it comes off. God, you have to wonder what Brave Man's game got to do, don't you? Absolutely. Don't forget figures, all that sort of stuff. He's going More to than absolutely, that. He's going to that. absolutely love Kempton, and whatever happens, let's hope they do tussle. It's going to be some showpiece that on Boxing Day. Uh, talking about some showpiece, next week sees the return of up in the anti-kills. It does, yeah. I mean, this is it's unmissable, isn't it? Especially given the strength we've got in Ireland these days. Yeah. Um, you know, we just had a look. You know, they've got all the best horses, the top, uh, the, the big name trainers. They're going to have stacks and stacks of winners at Cheltenham. This is the this is the the show that looks forward to Cheltenham every week. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, David Jennings and uh, Johnny Deneen. Johnny Deneen, former Irish bookmaker, big liar. Who saw that coming? Form judge. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You've got to. Uh, you got to pay attention to it. Yeah, you're absolutely. So 6 p.m., November the 8th, that's next Tuesday. Don't worry, guys, it's back. We've kept them under wraps until now. They've been working on a great show for you this winter. Unmissable stuff. Pat Cooney quaking when that show goes out because they'll be putting up winners aplenty. Not just about the Cheltenham Festival, but what's coming your way as well in those lovely maiden hurdles and bumpers. What's coming your way on this show, you cry? We go to Sonning in Reading and talk to leading jumps owner Max McNeil. Got two huge players in some of the feature races this weekend. Great chat with Max, one of our big race sponsors as well. Always fun coming for the big Blackburn fan. Then we're giving you five race previews, including the Hall and Gold Cup. We'll be whizzing over to Lexington to Kentucky to give you our best bets in the Breeders' Cup as well. Before those all-important weekend winners. Right then, a nice change of pace for you, interviewee-wise. Great guest for you. This has been a long time in the coming on What A Shout. Thrilled to say that we can go to leading jump owner, dual purpose owner maybe, in his house in Sonning. Max McNeil joins us on the show. Max, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you doing? Oh, really good. And Max, we've tried to have you on before. You're always going racing. Uh, you, uh, it, if anyone doesn't know out there and you've been living under a rock, this is Max's time of year because certainly the famous striped colours now, we're all very well established on the race course. Max, one of our biggest sponsors out there. You all know the Ultima Handicap at the Cheltenham Festival. Well, that's Max's prize money. And uh, it's fair to say you're one of our more transparent owners, Max. Would that be right? Well, I don't know about that, uh, you know, but we've, um, we keep people informed for the Twitter account, uh, Ian Turner, the racing man, our racing manager is excellent at doing that. And, uh, you know, it's, it, you know, we're getting good. We get good feedback from it. People seem to like their horses, you know, <clears throat> working and, uh, you know, outside of the race course. And, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a good thing to do for the sport, really. Obviously, Max, you got into this through your business, uh, you know, some big sponsorship through Ultra. It's not just Cheltenham that you sponsor at as well, Max. Very family affair. We'll get to that in a second. Obviously, the yeah. way the world's going, Max, loads of people talking about sponsorship, prize money down and all that sort of thing. Where's your sort of position on this? Where can you see it going at the moment? Well, that's a good question. I mean, where, where, where does it go? I mean, with our... With our race, firstly, you know, the spot, the, the prize money is pretty good. Uh, you know, it's obviously a Cheltenham race. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, I, I mean, I don't have sole control over Ultima now. I sold a majority stake. So I've got to uh, speak with the uh, other shareholders to see if we can, uh, you know, get the race passed this year. We've got it. We've got this year si signed and sealed. 
And it's just a case of, uh, you know, trying to get it done for the next two to three years. So we're going to we'll be speaking with Cheltenham, but it's worked really well for us. Um, so, you know, that that race is is hopefully going to stay the Ultima for a few more years to come. I've, I'm, I'm working hard at that behind the scenes and prize money general. I mean, it is disappointing, isn't it? I mean, you know, you, we, you have well, there's a bumper we ran in the other day too. I think we just over two grand to the winner. And, and you know, it's very difficult. Um, and I think you've got to get your head round as an owner. You, you don't do it for prize money. I mean, if you did, you'd be a bit sad, really. I mean, the. the, the because you're never going to make a, a return. It's it's something you do for the passion, for for some for your, your enjoyment. Uh, you know, it's it, it sort of takes over your life in many ways, especially from as you say, from sort of this time of year till the end of April, mid May. Um, and you know, you've, you you know, we're in a couple of nice races at the weekend. You know, if we win one of them, or if we win one of them in the season, it just uh, eases the pain of. Uh, of, of paying out all the uh, training fees every month. Yeah, it is um, a very you know. family-run operation, isn't it, Max? I mean, it, if you're out there on your members' club at the moment, viewers, and you're searching for some of these horses that we're about to talk about with Max, you might find it a bit difficult because it's fair to say you love opening the doors. No one loves a partner more than that, Max McNeil. Say that again. So No one loves a partner more than Max McNeil. <laughs> Trying well, to find I'll your have... silks is a nightmare. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. Well, the situation is, and that's a very good point, is that, you know, you see two horses, right? And Adrian sits on them. We do our due diligence. We see, we've seen probably seven or eight. We love two. So, you know, kind of think, well, do you buy one of them outright or do you buy two of them? And, you know, you speak to people who, and it's actually, it's a self-perpetuating thing. The more, I guess, success, if not that, you know, we have a bit of success, but the more success we have, the more well-known we are, people are more keen to come in and have, and have a half a share with us. And it's, and it, we always do it 50, 50, uh, you know, so we put our money, if, you know, also X thousand, we put, we would put in half and, and, you know, so we always do it that way. And, you know, so in that, that knowledge I just gave, if, if you are going to look at those two horses, you want to buy, the, you know, you have half shares in both, because as you know, horses are bloody de uh, delicate things. And you know, if you buy that one and it steps on a stone the, the day before the big race, it's, it's due to running, then, you know, or, 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 you know, does something worse than that, then you've got the other one to fall back on. So it's just about spreading your risk, actually. And also it's all great fun to the people we own horses with. They're all great mates. You do so get you know, the sense right. there's a lot of fun around you and the horses, Max. Talking about delicate things, shall we bring in Paul Keeley <laughs> into the play? I don't Kills. think I've ever been called delicate before. Well, <laughs> I work with him every week, Max, trust me. Um, uh, um, these are now well-established colours, aren't we? Oh, We're going to talk about some old favourites now, shall we? And uh, we've got the top five hurdlers and chasers killed. Some great names in there. Of course, Mark, Max is being modest because he's a great one winning owner. Walk on, of course, as a four year old was a Walk on, horse. massive, massive. One of my favourite, one of my favourite horses of years ago. In fact, I was, I was, I was hatching an anti post plan for the Paddy Power Gold Cup for ages before, <laughs> before we ran in, ran in it, and uh, it probably it's just so ridiculously unlucky. So it's probably Alpha off winning that race. Probably the best performance in that race for years. It chucked it down as uh, well, didn't it? Absolutely lashed it down, and he only got beat three lengths. The rest of them were beaten an absolute country mile. And, uh, yeah, it was, it's a shame he only won one, one chase walk on, but he was a cracking horse. Mm. Went really well fresh. Obviously won the grade one at Aintree. Uh, Second in the Triumph. Well, the Triumph went to Grimetti, won a Cez as well. The Cesarovich, of uh, course. It's a nice link for that coming yeah, up with us and this we, weekend. We see plenty of Grimetti on uh, on Twitter because he's, he's, he's with a Twitter account holder and... and uh, Katie, her name is, I don't know what... Yeah, she's got a Zerti as well, hasn't she? Got got that's a really good account. She's got a Zerti as well, and, you know, they're well looked after. It's great to see them. Yeah, OK, Max, some of your old favourites then. Again, let's talk through them. The World's End, one of mine. Yeah, World's End, he was a great horse for us. You know, uh, he won two grade ones as well, actually. Um, I mean, <laughs> Matt Chapman said on the day, and actually he was probably right, but um, we probably won the weakest grade one that's ever been run at Ascot, to be fair. Uh, that marsh hurdle. Did you uh, care at the time? <laughs> I <don't> know. <laughs> no, I, I was going to say. I just, I just cut my ears and went. Sorry, you know, we won a grade one at Ascot. I mean, exactly. you know, uh, uh, where would you rather be? So, I mean, he and he did the business that day, uh, and it, you know, that was his chance. That was his cut final. Said it at the time, and uh, you know, he did the business, which was great. And soon as you know, he was never that aside, never quite good enough for grade one class, and of course, he was. Too good for the handicaps, too high in the handicaps. So, you know, we were a bit betwixt and between. And as soon as he started uh, 
losing a bit of interest uh, in the whole thing, we decided to, um, you know, give him a long, happy retirement. And he's down now um, with a girl called Charlotte, Charlie, who looks after him. And and that's her only horse that she looks after. And he's, she's, uh, he's down there in Devon. Yeah, superb. Some others on that list, Max, and I want to talk about two in training as well. Uh, let's talk about Scaria 10 first, if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, we weren't, I mean, the form of that National Hunt chase a couple of years ago, Galvin, Next Destination, you know, Snow Leopard S beating the Country Mile remastered, and it was top, 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 wasn't it? I know you wanted to make him into a Gold Cup horse, but it looks like the National, again, this season might be the plan for him. Yeah, definitely. Um, that, that was his plan all the way last season. I mean, he ran a cracker in the National. If you if you paused it, which I have, by the way, uh, two out, um, you know, there was about four or five horses going to win the race, and he was one of them. But he just didn't get home. And the, the big concern for his all day uh, at Aintree um, in April there was the ground. You know, we, we you know, Gordon all said we always knew that he wanted softer ground because he's an out-and-out -out stayer. And Adrian said when he came off, he, was, he just had the choke you know, sort of out for that for a little bit too long. And sort of his big worry was that he was going to just cut out because they were just going that a little bit too quick. If the ground had been a bit softer, um, perhaps, you know, uh, he would have sort of got got the, got home a little bit easier because it would have been going quite, quite so quick early on, you know. That's interesting. He's a nine-year-old, obviously. What would be the plan to be? Obviously, we didn't see him until the Thiestes chase. He was a whopping eye-catcher in that, by the way, on his return last season. Then we saw how good he was against any second now. Is it going to be a case of gently, gently and unleash him nearer Aintree? Yeah, it, it is with him. And look, you know, I haven't actually spoken to Gordon. That hasn't had him back. He's been at Sean Doyle's uh, for the summer. He hasn't had him back that long. And, and you know, he's... he's He's a, a horse that needs a bit of looking after, and Gordon's done a, an amazing job with the horse. Um, and I just think with him, you just got to play it quite steady. He had two runs before the national last year, um, narrowly losing out to any second now, and we know how well he ran in the national. Uh, I think we just got to mind him a bit. Um, and if you mentioned the Thiestes there. Uh, I think that's late January, isn't it? I won't be I won't be surprised if that was his first target, and then. You know, as Gordon said uh, to me earlier in the, um, you know, in the autumn there, he said that, uh, that, you know, we've got one race in mind and it's a national. And, uh, you know, that's that's his target. OK, a man that knows how to win it, of course. Uh, kills three under three five is another horse that we saw on that list. Uh, a second season chaser who for a long way in the West Yorkshire Hurdle at Weatherby on Saturday ran like he absolutely hated the hurdles, but looked like he might win it. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he's one. It's one of those, isn't it? You, you quite often see um, chasers come back in that race. It's a perfect. It's a perfect starting point if you want to go somewhere else, and they quite often jump big as chasers do going back over hurdles. Native River did exactly the same. Uh, I think it was a perfectly good. It was a perfectly good return to action. Chasing's his game. Yeah, definitely. And when we saw the way he jumped, I thought he was a bit ponderous to start with. But he just got better and better and better last year, didn't he? And he, you know, he's. You know, he's probably got a decent prize in him because he's one of those, he's tough and consistent, isn't he? And he tries. Yes, this is the acid test season for him, Max, isn't he? But he's got a massive following this horse, not only because he's ridiculously prolific, but he's got a funny old head carriage, is not he? Yeah, he has. And, he, and again, you know, it's a bit quirky to, to when you see him run, but, you know, he's a horse we love. I mean, if, if uh, you know, we have a bit of a, a thing uh, amongst the family there and, you know, he's the captain of our team, if you like. You know, he's the, uh, you know, the dual grade two winner last year. Um, you know, things didn't go for him at uh, in the Brown Advisory at Cheltenham. You know, came came across a very good horse, of course, who won it. But, you know, the ground, you know, he wouldn't want it that soft, uh, in all honesty. And, look, perhaps he wasn't good enough. But, you know, he's on a nice mark now. I think it's 151. We went to the Bet365 hurdle, a race we love. We actually won that with World's End as well. Uh, uh, I think 2019 we won it with, with, with him. Uh, it's a great race. And, you know, I, there's no doubt about it. It was a prep race for, for the Hennessy. You know, Paul, I saw Paul in the summer. He says, uh, uh, three under Hennessy, end of. And I, and I saw the Coral Cup, rather, sorry, the Coral Cup. And I, you know, I, I said, well, it's a race I've, all, I've never had a runner in, actually. Uh, I've been going to for years and years because it's one of our, you know, I've got Newbury, our local tracks, and I've been going to the Hennessy meeting, as it was, uh, for many, many years. And I thought it'd be love to have a runner um, in this race one day and and you know three, it's always been three under target it, it, whilst he was fit enough to run in the race last week you know he wouldn't Paul wouldn't have him primed and he was took a massive blow afterwards and you know he just hopefully stays sound and I think if he gets there in one piece uh, three weeks on Saturday I think he'll have a he'll have a you know lively chance yeah, you can see yeah, him coming in with the betting can't you Kills because he's had that yeah. one now and his style of racing at Newbury might just really 
get some others at it, might it? Yeah, it could do, yeah. And, and the thing is, he might have that high head carriage, but it didn't stop Cucard winning loads of races, did it? I mean, they're not, you know, they're not all rogues when they're like that. And he's won his fair share of races. I, you know, yeah, he, he, you know, Marco 151 is not bad at all, to be honest. Like, you know, he'll, he'll be... He'll be in there with a chance, I'd have thought. Are you going? Probably, yeah. There you go. You can go and see Max on his one. Oh, right, yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You care for what you wish for, Max. Uh, let's <laughs> let's raise our sights, if you don't mind, to this weekend. And uh, bidding to go one better than last year, a senior citizen for you. You had, of course, killed Tealy Briggs in this as well, who uh, probably just going to be giving him a bit more time. He would have been my selection in the race, but I think I was with this guy last year when he finished second. He's only a pound higher. He did have a prep run going into it last year. How are your hopes for him? Yeah, I mean, and that's a very good point. Yeah, he uh, won at Market Raisin, didn't he? Fun enough, the race that Kultili Briggs won this year. Uh, Kultili was always in, in a back as a backup, first of all. Um, Jamie felt he needed another week in any case. But if, you know, seniors stood on a stone or something, then we had something, you know, we, we, we were keen to have a runner in the race, obviously. Um, but with senior, you know, he loves the national fences. He's, I think he's been second and third. He was third in the top and second in this last year. Uh, you know, and then he was eighth in the Topham again, um, you know, and and he missed a piece of work before the Topham last year. So he wasn't, you know, there was there was a reason why perhaps he didn't run up to his normal level. So as long as he didn't, doesn't get too wet for him, yeah. he goes well fresh. So, that you know, that's the reason why we thought, spoke with Kingy and Kingy said, look, the horse goes well fresh. Why are we, you know, let's just go there. I'll have him, you know, bang on for it. Um, it's It's been his early sort of season target. His later season targets to top him. Anything else in between is, you know, <clears throat> is uh, there to get him ready for those two those two races. He loves the um, he loves the national fences, and you know that's that that's will go Saturday again. With it. it's always been his target since um, his last run in April. We won't tease it too much, Kills, because uh, uh, we are going to do a single preview of this. But you like him for it, don't you? Yeah, I do. I mean, the, the fresh angle is quite good because obviously he won first time out last season uh, before going there and running second to Mac Totty, another proper Aintree horse who went on and won the top. Yeah. Went on and won the top. So yeah. he goes there with proper course credentials. And, you know, the fences might not be as big as they used to be, but, you know, it's still a course that lends itself to specialists. And I think I think we can definitely describe him as one. So, um, yeah, his handicap mark's about right. And unless something comes along and... Uh, and shows that it really is a proper national horse. I, you know, we, we talk about lifetime ambition, and I think might be one, but it yeah. might be over the wrong trip anyway. It might be a bit short for him, but you know, he's got to go there with a proper chance. Hasn't he? Very interesting indeed. So that's at two eleven at Aintree, one of the showpieces in ITV. An hour later, from the sublime to the ridiculous, the, the end of the flat season happens, and you've got the top weight Tritonic, of course, best known to us really these days as a hurdler, Max. Uh, he yep. came good at Goodwood last time, beating Goshen at a track he loves on soft ground. He likes. You've got Callum Hutchinson claiming five, and I've just seen he's drawn in 19. Fantastic draw for him. It's, I, I haven't seen that. And, and is it a good draw? It I, is. I would... Historically, oh, right, you've right. got to be wide. They come right off the bend usually there. I think 10 of the last 10 have been in, in double figures. So happy days. Oh, great. Well, I, I, so I, uh, thanks for letting me know. I didn't, I didn't know that. That's, that's good news. Yeah, I mean... As you say, he ran well at uh, at Goodwood, didn't he? And um, if the plan was always speaking with Alan and Ian before the race, we said, well, if he runs well here, we've got to have a look at the December handicap. If he doesn't, we might have to look at the uh, Greatwood and go back over hurdles. We're sort of a little bit reluctant to do it. I'm, you know, I'm not going to write off Cheltenham, Cheltenham with him completely, but he's never really turned up there, to be honest. Whereas at Ascot, he absolutely loves. So he was second in the Royal Meeting on the flat, obviously, and... You know, he's won his two out of two over hurdles. So from that point of view, um, Ascot was always his target. And we were keen to, you know, he's only two pounds higher than he was when he won it last year, going to that race in, you know, just before this, before Christmas. So that was his target on the flat. So what do we do in the interim? We didn't want to muck up that handicap mark. We think he's got a cracking chance in this in this race. It's 75 grand pot. Um, as you say, Callum uh it takes five pounds off and obviously his old man has ridden many winners for us as well so that's quite a nice touch as well um so yeah i think you know as you said now the draw is in his favor um it's it, it's a great race to be involved with and then, then win lose a draw there he go, he'll go straight to ascot all being well yeah they must quite fancy him at king to that ascot because when he said that call of the wild was going over fences who i put up on the show like, i thought it was certainty to go and run mm. in these races so yeah. he's obviously got some very well handicapped hurdlers there as well hasn't he? he could he, he could well do tritonic is that a horse i, I follow for one fairly sure i backed him at royal ascot when he was second 
Mm. Um, he's got a, he's definitely got a shot. It's going to be really deep, horrible ground though, isn't it? And we've got a very short price favourite in the race in Israel who bolted up there last time. But yeah, you're, you're probably looking at a group horse there, but will he want the ground that deep? That's a question. Max, absolutely fantastic talking about your runners this weekend. We must talk about some of your horses, uh, your young horse, if you don't mind, otherwise I'll be throwing tomatoes at the screen. Big Blackburn fan, as we know. You talk about captain of the team earlier. Love the references there. How's Shearer? <laughs> Oh, he's great. Yeah, he came out of the race really well. Uh, you know, last season, uh, Paul was really bullish about him. You know, and Paul's a bullish guy, isn't he? You know, um, but he was really bullish about him. And we we, we ran him at uh, Wincanton on uh, sort of good to firm ground. And probably that was a mistake. And I blame myself for that because, you know, I was there and I thought, come on, let's just run him. And, and uh, I'll never make that mistake again. And really, as a result, he had sore shins all season. And Paul was trying to mind him. And when he ran disappointingly air last time out, um, Paul phoned me up at the week after and he said, look, Max, this horse has got to get, we'll get something done by, you know, his shins because it's really causing him bother. And that's the reason why he thought he, he ran so disappointingly. So I had him pin fired. Uh, we gave him, um, you know, sort of a, the whole summer off, obviously. And then he's come back a different horse. I mean, it's a bit quirky. You talk about high head carriage with uh, Shearer. This lad carries his tail in a way that I've never seen, really. And, uh, you know, it's a bit weird. Um, you know, and he only does enough to win the race. I mean, I thought Adrian gave him a superb ride at Cheltenham um, the other day where, you know, he can't get to the front too soon because then he, he you know, doesn't know what to do. And, and, you know, so you had to hold him back and he just timed his run to perfection and, and he did well. I mean, the, the downside is, of course, he went up four for his win in at Worcester and then eight pounds for, for the win at Cheltenham. So, you know, he's up rated off 138, 139 now, I think. So, you know, that's going to make life difficult for him. And, and and he's still a novice till the end of the month, but he's, you know, he's got to carry load three penalties, I think, whatever it is. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just a question of where we would go next. I think we'll go probably the handicap route. And then, uh, look, he's always going to be a, a, a better chaser than a hurdler. So, uh, yeah, one more over hurdles, I think, and then we'll take a view. You're doing my job for me, Max. I was going to ask you about fences. Uh, a horse across the RSC, if you don't mind. Three card brag that got loads of people's attention when he won at Galway in the week. Where's this chap come from? He's exciting. Yeah, he came from Sean Doyle, a uh, horse that uh, we, 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 we were following there for a while. Um, you know, we, we uh, had the chance to buy him uh, with our, my good friends Paddy and Scott Bryceland, who've got a lovely horse running tomorrow, by the way, called Magical Zoe, which Adrian's going over to ride. Um, that's a lovely horse they've got there with Henry. Um, yeah, we share it with him. It, you, you run it, it's funny, I was speaking to Ian Turner about this in the week when we were discussing Three Car Brag. He was in a bumper at, oh God, I'm I can't remember. I think it was Wexford or somewhere. And um, against one of uh, Willie Mullins, uh, Joe Donnelly hot pot. I think it was, you know, it was an expensive purchase. We know that. And, you know, he was odds on favourite. And I think we were four or five to one when I went to bed. And then when I woke up, he was like 12, 15 to one. And Ian phoned me up and he said, has this horse lost a leg? <laughs> and we couldn't believe his price. And, you know, Gordon said, well, he's been working well at home. You know, I, don't, I can't understand it. And anyway, you know, he, he was... Uh, I say it was a big price, and um, he, he came up alongside uh, Willie's horse, took him on, and, and beat him. And that was, you know, and that horse has gone on to do good things since. And, you know, we were a bit under the radar. We looked at the race last Saturday. Everybody was telling me how hot it was. Um, you know, there was bumper winners, there was, uh, you know, sort of all sorts of hurdle winners, there was previous hurdle winners, there was all sorts of, there was four really good, three really good other horses in the race. And we thought this is a, you know, this is a tough starting point. And it's funny, when you win the race, you probably sort of question it. Well, was it as strong as we thought? You know, uh, uh, but he did, he ran, I thought he ran a cracker and he, and he was still green, wasn't he? He made a couple of mistakes. Um, and Davey, uh, I didn't speak to him personally, but he left a really good message after. And he uh, he was really impressed with the horse. And uh, I, I think he's really exciting. And if, if, if I may, I've got one more horse that perhaps I'll mention to you. It's a horse called Cato Capone, also with Gordon, who... Um, is it and Conte and Kenzie Bruno, the one with John McConnell, uh, one it, at Cheltenham, Cheltenham, Cheltenham Bomb Pumper? Yeah, I think that's yeah. how, I'm not too sure how to pronounce it. But we were second to, to that horse uh, uh, in a point to point. And I know John quite well and he loves the horse. Um, so, you know, that he could be quite exciting, that horse, uh, a horse called Cato Capone. I'll tell you what, he can manage well, to do the show if you Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just come and take charge. We'll just sit back and listen. I'm taking <laughs> yes, notes now. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. That won't be any prize now, Max. I'm sorry about that. Max, genuinely, absolute pleasure to have you on. We better cut it up because we know you're on the clock. Uh, look, huge luck from us all here at Water Shout this weekend. Where will you be, Aintree or Doncaster? I'm going to Aintree. Aintree is always a plan. Um, 
Yeah, uh, uh, Ian, who we own, uh, Ian Day and Barbara, who we own Tritonic with, are off to, to Donny um, to watch to watch him there. And, uh, you know, look, I'm a jumps man. Aintree was always a plan. I'm off to watch Senior. Um, and there's really good racing there all day as well. And, uh, you know, have a few beers and, and enjoy the day, I hope. That's what it's all about. Max, we'll have you back on if you don't mind towards the end of the season. Absolute pleasure Thanks for you so. viewers out there. Nice change of pace with the leading owners in our jumps game, Max McNeil. Right, without further ado, brilliant interview with Max McNeil. Let's get looking at some of those big races and we'll see whether we all fancy Max's runners this weekend as well. But on Friday, Kills, there's a great showpiece at Exeter, the Holden Gold Cup. I know this is a race you love. Let's see what Pat tells us the betting before we get Kills' tip. Yeah, well, as things stand at the moment, third time Lucky is just about favourite, round about 15 to 8 as we speak. Warlord sits there at 2. Green at 11 of 4. Dollars at 6 and us and them at 50. So... It's it's only five runners, but a fiendishly difficult race, I feel. Mm, fiendishly difficult. All right, Pat, if you had to pin your colours. Well, I thought with Green Atini, he never seems to get a lot of love, this horse. He's always easy to back in the market. That being said, he was beaten in this race off the same mark a year ago, and then we saw him uh, come out and win at the Tingle Creek. So I would imagine that would be the path he'll be. He won't be quite cherry ripe on Friday. So I think he'll be opposed in the market again. I find it, you look at something like Dollis, well, is he a Sandown specialist? Maybe so. So I'm between the two seven-year-olds, third time Lucky and Warlord. Um, not much between them, but I just thought Warlord, I quite like his profile. Only 10 stone seven, getting so much weight from Greener Team, getting weight from third time Lucky. I think the Tizard stable, I think they're about to hit top form as well. So I'll keep with Warlord uh, at the weights. Mm, very interesting then. So, you know, a race over the ages kills, which has seen the best run in it. Uh, drama over the years, as we remember before our best mate, of course. But some of the greats have run in it. We often see a top weight bidding to, you know, show his class in it. And we've got one here in Greener Team. But as Pat said, is this another prep for Sandown? Yeah, well, Greener Team won the race two years ago, didn't he? But he was rated 151 then, and he's rated 168 now, which is exactly the same in which he was beaten, well beaten off last year. Now, it's a fair old chunk of weight to be, weight to be carrying against young, improving horses. And his number one target is this race, and his number two target is the other grade one at Sandown at the end of the season because he's a yeah. you know he's a proper Sandown horse. He's running three grade ones and he's won them all. The celebration, of course. <coughs> so yeah. whatever, whatever he does now, Paul Nichols said in his stable tour that he's working really, really well, but he won't have him cherry ripe for this. And you're going to have a awful lot in hand of your handicap mark to win a race not cherry ripe. And when your handicap mark is 168, you're going to be exceptional. So I, you know, I I think he's going to struggle. Can we make a pact? Go on. That we don't put up Dolos until no. he goes back to Sandown. No, <laughs> absolute, race. absolute, no. Absolute. You're going to, are you going to tip him? Listen, yes, I am. When you when you when you look at this race, right? Third time lucky. I'm, I'm confused by third time lucky being favourite. I know how well he goes fresh. He looked brilliant first time out last season. Although the horses that he beat first time out last season are rated no better than they were then. Uh, he spent most of the year looking like a short runner over two miles. Right now, Exeter would be one of the stiffest tracks in the country if the race was only over two miles. It's, two it's mile a grueling home straight, It's two mile, it? one and a half furlong. The home straight is all uphill with four fences to jump. Yeah. I mean, that first time tongue tie has really got to work. Uh, put it that way. I, you know, I don't, I don't see him getting home. I thought he would come back in the Schlur uh, or something like yeah, that. I I didn't did. see yeah, this. I did. I didn't see this. It's, it's a real test. I mean, you know, maybe, maybe he's a different horse now. Maybe something was holding him back, but he just looked a short runner so, mm. so many times. Uh, to come here, I mean, this is the stiffest test for any two-miler uh, of the year. I've, you know, outside of, say, the Clarence House chase, which is when it's run on bottomless ground. So I, I think it's a difficult test for him. I think Warlord's probably the one to beat. Yeah. I think he needs to improve again. Now, the thing about Dollars is everyone just assumes that... First weekend in February at Sandown. Uh, first weekend in February at Sandown. Form figures 2-1-1-2-1. Two, one, one, two, one. Uh, that was one of the but, headaches of the show last but, season, wasn't it? Was he sixteen on. to one? Something ridiculous. He, he was, he was, we talked about it all he, year. He man. won the race at ten to one. I think he was. I think he was fourteen. But it, it, again, that was that was a time when all of Paul Nichols' other horses weren't running very well. Nick oh, yeah, and bolts up. All right. One, he won that race by four lengths from Ferrero Bamboo, who was third. It's went on to be the finish third in the Grand Annual and finished second last week at Ascot. Uh, uh, the third, who was who was well beaten off, Gunside uh, Ridge, wasn't it? Uh, uh, was it Gunside yeah, Ridge? Third, well, sorry, the fourth was Bandoran, who won a class two at Donkers the next time. The fifth, Tamarack the Muffin, Matam won since as well. It's a really solid piece of form. Now, Dollars is only weighted five pound higher now, even though he's one pound out of the handicap here. And the thing about him is, you just assume that that's his race, and he's never done anything else, which is untrue. 
Right, he's been badly handicapped for a while, but second, first time out in 2019, he was second in this race off a mark of 157. Right, first time out in 2020, he was fourth at Cheltenham in a handicap of 161. Now, he started last year off 157. He lost the plot big time. We ran so badly on those first three starts of last year that it couldn't just have been his handicap mark, and the result was a free-falling mark. So he now starts this season on the lowest mark he's been started the season for ages. So will Paul Nichols not think, well, I can win a big prize Do you think he'll lead? I think he will. He doesn't, he doesn't need to lead. I but think... Warlord probably won't lead. Well, he's third time lucky, definitely won't lead. Grenatine's a keen horse. Well, third time lucky has led, but I'm sure they won't And we've now. got a roughie in there. Well, Grenatine's keen. Third time lucky's keen. He might do, but he if Paul Nichols has got him ready, and I, I you know the way Paul Nichols thinks, he'd think I could win a big race with this one, and, yeah. it, and it could be this one. And I think eight to one's a massive price. There was a press morning at Dan Skelton's, you've probably seen this week. We were down there as well, and Dan said that th third time lucky's went brilliantly, and like Newman Negra, his stable mate, partner in crime, I think he called him. He goes extremely well fresh. Tongue tie on, interesting. It's fascinating to think he started off in points. Charlie Post managed to get him beat in one of them. Um, and I thought it's Warlord a case of was a solid one, but again, I, the tactics of the race worry me slightly. And I think third time, like it will, if it's a dawdle, he'll love it. But well, it depends on how keen he is, not it? Won't yeah. It? I mean, if you're if you're keen for the, for the best part of two miles, and then you suddenly hit the straight and you're running uphill, how are you going to get home? Yeah. The, the, the whole point is he's got to last the trip better this year, a lot better this year than he did last year. If he's going to be winning it. Two mile, one and a half round, es round, round Exeter. Lot said about October so far, seeing, well, October last month, sorry, seeing the smallest fields this century, but this is a fascinating little race. It is a fascinating little race, yeah. yeah. All right, let's move on to Saturday, shall we? Uh, when Canton's big day in the sun and the Badger Beers comes up, Pat Cooney. This is an absolute belter, I cannot wait. Yeah, and it's always a popular betting heat, this one. As things stand at the moment, I think this is going to be a real volatile market, this one. Uh, Paul Nichols has got the two at the top of the market in Rillo and Frodon. Frodon, of course, comes here rather than run on the soft ground at Down Royal um, on Saturday. So you have to respect Frodon. It doesn't seem badly weighted to me, 158, but I don't know, 12 stone, not really. And Rillo is currently one of the market leaders as well. But you look at his form figures, FP, 4P. Um, so he has bits to prove, really. He's a likeable horse. He always seems to be popular in the market. But I, th I think his form figures will turn people off. So it's a tricky old race. You can make a case out for many of these. Lots of familiar names coming back to this race. I, I thought one like Lord Accord, who's got a decent recent winning run to his name two weeks ago. Neil Mulholland, uh, Richie McLernan up. An improving seven-year-old. I think he's got more to, more to recommend him than, say, Enrillo and Frodon, really. I think both of them have bits to prove for me. All right, one of two races that we're covering at Wing Canton this weekend. One of small field later on in the Elite. We'll get to that. 13 miles due to go to post. It's been, we're not running at Wing Canton. We're not running at Wing Canton. It's too quick at Wing Canton. It's too quick at Wing Canton. And then we're at the time of year now, aren't we, where they've had so much rain, it could be a right old slog, can it? Well, smash it down. It won't be a right old slog. I don't think it, I, I don't think it'll, I don't think it'll be How that How much soft. have they had this week? Well, you know, you know, you know, you've got to remember, you know, they, they, they've had a good two and a half, three inches. I, I, I don't know exactly the, the amounts, but you've got to remember that it was only a little while ago that they had to cancel the meeting. They haven't been able to water, remember, so it's been bone hard. So hopefully, so he didn't want the ground we can't to, stand rain sodden Paul water. Paul Nichols didn't want the ground down. too soft at Dan Royal, but the fact that he was preparing him for another go at a grade one first time out this season, he says, one, he's ready, two, yeah. he's still got confidence in the horse, yeah. and then he's sort of said, well, hang on a minute, we have got a handicap mark, we're 158, we got, we got um, nicely dropped six pounds for, for finishing midfield in the Ultima, and first time out, you know he's fit, you know how well he jumps, you see this race at Wincant and year in, year out, half the field's jumping will fall apart, yeah. uh, because a lot of them aren't as fit as you, you expect them to be. So I think he's very much the one to be. I can I can see I can see him being quite a gamble actually. Uh, you know he's not he's not a good thing. What are we any... talking about? I mean he's fives at the moment. Yeah, he's fives. Well. I can see him going off three. He's got four. a Rillo in the I, race. I, I could well, see him. It? I could see him going off quite short. He's it, you know he's gonna he's a popular horse anyway. Yeah, it's his run style and the fact that six yeah. pounds for that old. Yeah, run, exactly. That's... He could get you know and he could get them in a lot of trouble. So I could easily see the money from him. I have backed him. Um, if there's a danger for me, it's Irish prophecy. Now, I just think he, I, I just think they went to the world for a, a little bit too many times last autumn with him, 
And he absolutely hacked up uh, before running in this race last year, so so much so that he went on third favour for this race. But this race was his, like, his, his fourth three-mile chase in the space of six weeks, and he ran no race at all. He returns here, a far fresher horse, having just returned the form of a second last time out, on a mark, I think, eight pound lower than he was last year. If the ground stays on the quick side, because he cannot even have it good to soft, he's a proper fast ground yeah, chaser. He is, yeah. uh, then he's the danger to Frodon. But it would not surprise me in the slightest if Frodon jumped him silly. This is such a good addition to this race. You've got the past two winners. You've got um, Rocco in it uh, for the Twisters. You've got El Presente, who mm -hmm. won it two years ago. You've got Potterman, who's been pacing it the last couple of times. You've got Captain Nor, who, if he puts it together, could see him going well. I was all ready to nap one in this race because I like Ben Pauling's slip away, mm -hmm. who in April won a three mile six race at Perth. Watch that back. Turning for home, there's only one horse in that. And while you're talking about horses that would probably be more sort of spring, summer sort of jumpers, they were all bang in form. He absolutely cooked him. Three mile six was too far for him. He's a young horse. He's still going places. Again, I'll be watching the ground with him. But then Frodon comes along. And I can just see it with you. He, if, if Bryony gets him into that rhythm, yeah, it's all over. Rhythm, he could jump him silly. Yeah, so Frodon for me and slip away. Frodon for you? Yeah, I think so, yeah. All right, OK. Let's go up to Aintree, shall we, Pat? Over the national fences. Time for the Grand Sefter. Now, we've heard from Max McNeil, uh, senior citizen, bidding to go one better. He likes his chances. Yeah, and rightly so. He looks one of these solid each-way alternatives in the race. And um, I'm sure, if, if I can see him certainly being about eight, nine to one chance and running perfectly honourably. But um, the mover during the week was Broken Halo, not a horse I know a great deal about. And uh, he's trained by Paul Nichols, Lorcan Williams aboard. Paul Nichols has a decent record in this race, as he does with every other race he has horses in. But Broken Halo, four races over fences. It doesn't seem like he's... a terribly experienced enough for me so that would be a negative for me uh, I look at two for gold and I thought I can see him being the right type for this race he does seem to win first time out as well but and he jumps well he didn't stay the Grand National trip last year but he has got 12 stone and a mark of 159 so I could see him running well up into a point and basically I was just trying to fancy horses then I was struggling to come up with anything really I've ended up thinking Al Dancer of Sam Thomas, who had a winner, and of course we wish him well after his uh, recent uh, setback. Um, I think Al Dancer is a likely type for this race. He doesn't seem badly handicapped to me. He goes on any ground. So uh, I, I thought I ended up fancying him more by elimination with the others. Yeah, we spoke to Sam Thomas, of course, last week. Uh, thankfully, Sam emerged on skates in the helicopter crash. Really uh, a dramatic scenes and his boss, uh, uh, Di Walters, hopefully will come out of hospital without a hitch there. Thoughts to everyone down at the Hollies in Wales. Yeah, and he talked to us about this chap last week. He said Sam Tristan Day was very keen for the ride. In fact, he's going to win Canton. Probably tells Day's got ride Rocco, I imagine. Uh, and um, Charlie Deutsch comes in for the ride. He's going to go around the inside. Again, and I hope that you're sensing this at home as well. We just talk about this game differently, don't we, to what we do on the flat. Well, you can sense that from the Badger Beers when yeah. we've done. You can sense that from all the Gold Cup. We know these characters. We absolutely love them. Do you think it will be a case of lightning striking twice then? With what uh, with senior sitting just being bang there, and it's a case of whether anything else is just. Well, I think he's. Gap. You know, I'm, I mean, well, first of all, I'm starting this race on the, uh, behind the eight ball anyway because I really, really, really fancied oh, yeah. Lost in Translation. He didn't get declared, and I, you know, you know, he, he, he went round a bit like Live Love Laugh did in the National when he ran in it and then came back to to win the top. And I just thought this is absolutely. Guaranteed to run a great race in this race, but he's, he's going to sand down instead on Sunday, so I'm behind. Uh, and the more I look at it, the more I think senior citizen who ran in the race second time out last year uh, and was beaten by Matt Totty, who is, um, you know, as we've discussed, a really, really good Aintree horse who won the top of him as well. And he was only beaten a length there. Uh, he's been placed in another race at the chase and uh, another race at, uh, over the Aintree fences. So he's just a proper Aintree horse and his record first time out is impeccable as well. So uh, I think all roads lead to a really, really good run. He's going to be an each way price. Um, so look no further if something beats him, fair enough, but he'll be in, he'll be in the frame. OK, all right. I was just looking down there because I'm looking to see whether Sean Bone rode Mac Totty uh, when he won it. It's, it's obviously him or James. I think it was Sean. And he's got one in here for the Coulthards. Uh, is it Cooper's Cross that absolutely hosed up at, mm. at, uh, at, at Carlisle? I'm going to hear Pat. Mm, and he, they've got <laughs> business with these fences. You remember they won uh -huh. the, uh, the Hunter Chase ages uh -huh. ago. He immediately earmarked that after the race. He won as he liked that horse. He's got yeah. absolutely no way. Well, the, the other one that's been earmarked is um, Jessica Harrington's Lifetime Ambition. And that's the one. Fascinating one. That's runner. the one you've got to fear me because she said 
she said, right, we might train him differently. We might go to an autumn, autumn decent ground, and he's, you know, he's made for the national fences. He was Drimmall type. Uh, horse, exactly. Wasn't he? Yeah, he's, you know, he's running graded races over fences. I don't, you know, on RPRs, he wouldn't be the best handicap horse in the races. But he's a seven-year-old, so his, his best, his best year should be, should still be ahead of him. But you know, they think he's a national horse for the future, uh, so they're coming over to have a look. I would have thought the beach would more have suited him because he really did appreciate the, the step up the three mile um, last season. Um, but he's an interesting horse all the same. Mm, all right then, okay. Shall we pop across the Irish Sea? Because it's a massive weekend uh, over at Downwall. Their big weekend, of course. We've got the WKD held on the Friday. Pied Piper coming back out. Huge team for Gordon Elliott, including Pat in the Jay and Wine Champion Steeplechase. We, again, we see Gold Cup winners going over this in, of yesteryear. I mean, it looks like Trouble going on it as he like. Florida Pearl, all the greats. Seemingly, Elliott holds the key again. Yeah, he's got the front two in the market, Galvin and Conflated. Now, Galvin's interesting. He was second in this race last year to Frodon, and he's followed a similar path this time. He came out and won at uh, Punchestown a couple of weeks ago, and one handily enough, and now he's going to come here. Perfectly solid chance, and of course, he's got that recent form, uh, which the Conflated hasn't. Conflated, you could say, maybe just the best horse in, in the race um, at this three-mile trip. Uh, we remember him falling in the, uh, the Ryanair over two and a half. He was staying on that day, so I think three miles will suit him. Galvin's the one to beat, you'd have to say, in terms of, is he the most likely winner? Yes. But, you know, you've got value horses in the race, like Ken Boy's around about a six-to-one chance. And is it wrong to fancy Envoy Allen? I mean, a couple of yes. years ago... He, he, <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he was the new Pegasus, wasn't he? Um, does he stay three miles? Don't know, but um, he's 10 to one. You, you know, you could, I've backed plenty of 10 to one users in my time, but uh, not as many as good as this horse. So I might think Envoy Allen could be one and just take my chances. He, he's he's going to travel surely through the race very well, but I suppose that the, where it really matters, uh, Galvin will be the one to cross the line in front. It is interesting that they're stretching him out, isn't it? Bearing in mind that, you know, he, he placed in the ch champion chase, you know, albeit, you know, yeah, distances behind. Yeah, and, and non-finishers and, and the uh, like. Yeah, but he was, look, he still did get his grade but, one uh, last year. And he, yeah, look. he did. Look, look, everyone, you know, we, you know we, we've made a habit, I suppose, of knocking horses that everybody tells you is, is the next absolute superstar that comes over from Ireland or anywhere. <laughs> All right? I mean, people need to forget that, people need to remember that it's extraordinarily rare for a horse to be the best in bumpers, in novice hurdles, in... In, in, in mainstream hurdles. We just had mainstream. those freaky uh, years with Altior and Yeah, Sprinter, it doesn't happen. It just doesn't right, happen yeah. that often because yeah. horses mature and improve at different rates. And the ones that are really, really precocious tend tend not to be the ones that stay there at the top. And that'll that'll happen again and again and again. We'll have we'll, we'll have a, we'll we'll have another one. Uh, you know, maybe this year, maybe next year. So you know, I, I you know I don't think he's up to it. And I look at the, those odds and I say conflated. I think he's comfortably the best horse in the race and should be favourite. I want to be you with him, Kills. You have the okay, Galvin, you know, you know, has got previous in the race, but conflated. He'd have been second to Alaho in the Ryanair. He won at Leopardstown. He was only beaten a lap by, by a back to form Clan de Zobo at yeah. Antry. He's the best horse in the race. He'll win. Oh, if he's fit. I just wonder where he's going to end up completely. Irish Gold Cup winner, of course. And again, I, I think well, probably he, you know, he runs. One. You know, he, he runs in the two big grade ones in, uh, at Leopardstown, doesn't he? Without a shadow of a doubt, he's already won one of them. He'll go back to him. So very interesting little puzzle. Top class jumpers coming out at Downwell. Enjoy that meeting. Let's go back to Wincanton for our final big race preview for you. It's the Elite Hurdle again, a race that's cut up, Pat, but we've got one of our favourites in it. Yeah, so royal. Amazing to think this fella won the race in 2016 and he also won it in 2020 and 2021. And on official ratings, he's 157. The next uh, rivals to him are either 146 or 145. So he's got a recent win to his name. He's comfortably the top rated horse in the race. Uh, he loves it round here. What's not to love? I suppose you could say Napasil will be uh, an improved horse this year. Knight Salute, well, he was comfortably put in his place by uh, Pied Piper last time out, so he has a bit to prove. And Milkwood, um, probably better a handicapper, really. So I think it's pretty straightforward. This is So Royal's race to lose. I'd rather be backing him at his price than Galvin at uh, the same odds in the, uh, the Down Royal race. So, so Royal, what's not to love? Small fields, Wincanton. Very hard to see him get beat for me. 
he's on a hat trick, and it's just going to be a case of what <coughs> price he is, isn't it? Basically. Yeah, I, I, I love him, but when you look at this race, right, you realise before 2018 it was a handicap. Yeah. And then some cretin came along and thought, "Oh, you know what we need? Another two mile graded, <laughs> graded hurdle." And Remember guess that what? cretin is. Guess Don't what? be watching this show. Guess what? Tiny fields, and the last three winners have been odds on, and the yeah. winner will be odds on again on Saturday. And yeah. is he going to win? He'll uh, win. He'll win. He'll he'll actually, he was actually odds on when he won it as a handicap, yeah. as a four year old, by the way. But but yeah, he's won it odds, odds on three times. Last three winners have been odds on. He's the best horse in the race. The ground is fine. He's got a turn of even as a ten year old. He's got that turn of foot. As we saw not many, again. not yeah. many horses yeah. have, and he'll win. I love him. Yeah. It's great for it's great for him. They must have been delighted when they turned it into a graded race. Just what just what racing in Britain needed, uh, and he'll go and win it again at odds on. They're talking about going up and trip again on with him a, a, a little bit later on. He's sort of seen Kingy's great stable tour with us earlier in the week. Uh, weekend a columnist, of course. Uh, we should learn a bit about this race. A couple of things look just before we sign off. Knight Salute and Pied Piper both running this weekend. We should learn a bit about the four-year-olds as a result. Oh, yeah, talking about them. Knight, well, Pied Piper beat Knight Salute, ran to a racing post rating of 144 and got given a 12 to 1 quote for the champion hurdle. It should be 120 to 1. There were 10 oh, horses, there were about 8 horses since <laughs> since September have run a better RPR the over hurdles. The hype machine got going And a bit there. every single one of them would be at least 200 to 1 to win a yeah. champion hurdle. That was quite interesting, isn't he? Because he won the EBF and Nichols said he's not embryo like mine he's going to go chasing uh, uh, will it it'll be interesting to see how much speed he's got for this and again we'll learn a little bit about him Miltwood should just run his race shouldn't he he's, just well, he's nice a very solid horse but he, I, think, I think he's a fast ground handicapper who wants a big field yeah alright there you go then there are your big roost previews I really enjoyed that did you let us know below Right, well, the curtain comes down at Doncaster in the November handicap traditionally on the British turf flat season. Loads of Euros, though, head over to Keeneland, Lexington, Kentucky uh, on Friday for a good juvenile card there and on Saturday as well. And uh, while this is a Marmite uh, meeting for a lot of people, I absolutely love it. It's on Terrestrial TV. What a job ITV are doing this weekend, by the way, Pat. Of course, we go all through the jumps, November handicap, then they keep on air. We go over there. You love it too. Absolutely. I've always loved it, and um, I will love it even more this weekend. And just set your alarm clocks in the 940, the best horse in the world, maybe the best horse ever. Flightline will be running, so I'll be loving it, no doubt about it. Best horse ever in the Breeders' Club Classic, which at 940 viewers out there for you. What a punter friendly card this is. Never, I mean, I've been up, like, still up looking through one eye on a glass at about two o'clock in the morning at the Breeders' Cup Classic. I remember Galileo falling in a hole, but we are going to give you a lucky 15 and uh, a nod to our spotlight writer, Ron Wood, the best in the business, bar none. These spotlights are a work of art and you're going to be able to get them on your members' club right around about six o'clock on uh, Thursday evening for Friday. Ron gives us his best bet on the Friday card. Here's the nap for you then. The unpronounceable, yeah, it doesn't read like this, but it's called Kajira in the juvenile Phillies turf. Uh, the Friday spots are Already online, Ron tells us, so a nod to that. On Saturday, let's move, this is a lucky 15. Very interesting. He thinks the boys in blue will win it with Naval Crown. That's up against Golden Pal and the lovable Highfield Princess. There's two then, Pat. We've got a nice price um, US runner and we've got a massive long shot for the boys in blue. Chuck one in. Yeah, I'm going 5-10 Saturday. The Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile and this is number seven, Cody's Wish who won uh, a grade one stroke group one in emphatic style last time it ran. An improver, trainer Bill Mott has a tremendous Breeders' Cup record. Uh, the excellent junior Alvarado aboard, he'll do for me. All right, OK, and the 840, which is the turf, one of my favourite races of the entire year, because we usually take it out and we see some great horses in there. Could often throw a bit of a conundrum at us. they got two in there, Rebels Romance and Nation's Pride. To name check that, but Will Buick's got the right one. He went over there and won as he liked. I'll be very surprised if he doesn't take this out before the classic. All right, there you go. There's a lucky 15 for you. Don't forget to check out Ron Wood's Spotlights on the Breeders' Cup. Here we go, then. Massive weekend for you out there and our three best hopes. I'll start, if you don't mind, 318 at Aintree. Gunsight Ridge goes back for a redemption mission. You remember him at the Aintree meeting at the Grand National? He flopped, but Ollie Murphy's got his horses up and running. We spoke to Ollie Murphy a couple of weeks ago. Very happy with this bloke. He can defy top weight in that. Paul Keeley. Yeah, I did just pure and purely for price reasons. The Holden Gold Cup, Dolos. I mean, everyone has this impression that he doesn't go well fresh, but he has off much higher marks than he's on now. And... If Paul Nichols, 
I can see Paul Nichols thinking I could win a big race with him, and it could be this one. Mm, for Johnny Delahaye then and Paul Nichols on Friday for you. Pat Cooney, bring us back to Saturday. Saturday, the 136 Rioja. Harry Fry making his uh, chase debut in a novice handicap chase. Forget his final run over hurdles. He was he was wrong that day. He's had a wind up. He uh, he won a point to point in Ireland over three miles, making all the running. He's just got chaser written all over him. Expect him to have a good season. And trained by Harry Fry, you know he's going to be fit and ready to roll first time out as well. So. Uh, have some Rioja in the 136 at Aintree. Oh, we'll be pouring it on, Pat. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> As will our punters, no doubt, to the weekend treble. Sadly, that is all we've got time for on this weekend's What A Shout. A foot in both camps then for you, November Handicap. Who wins it? Don't forget to like and subscribe. Get your comments and your tips in below. We love reading that. A thank you to Paul Keeley. Yep. You're more than welcome. Sizzlers on the uh, way. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to start cracking on to that. And... Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a 10 hour TV feast on uh, on ITV. It's great for the sport Saturday. kills, it's isn't it? It's brilliant for the sport, though. You can have a program on for that long. <coughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I love Marmite. I can't say I like the, not like the British Cup so much, but lots of people do. Yeah, quite right, absolutely. All right, thanks to Kills then. Uh, thanks to Pat Cooney as ever. What does it hold up in Stoke this weekend, my man? Well, actually, I always have this particular weekend off, and uh, I'm, I can't wait for the Breeders' Cup. And as I say, you just got to watch Flightland and just watch the build-up to the race. That's going to be amazing. Never mind the horse himself. Brilliant. All right, absolutely. Yeah, Pat, I'll be with you. And isn't it an absolute pleasure that it's not like I say past midnight? No pumpkins for us in Keeneland this weekend. Thank you to watching. A reminder that racing's number one app just got better. There it is. You can download it on the Google Play Store or the App Store itself. All the exclusive content. Biggest names like Kills, Tom Siegel, uh, myself occasionally on there as well, would you believe it? And you can do all your betting there if you want as well. Stay ahead of the field then with the new app. Don't forget to gamble responsibly this weekend. That's our MO here at the Racing Post and, of course, Bet3. 6 5 as well. Loads of sport out there this weekend. A great interview from Max Neil. Let us know you enjoyed that from myself, Dave Orton. Enjoy.